Hi, I'm Julie from PAC TV, and we're providing the candidates for the select board for the town of Plymouth this opportunity to let voters get to know them. Each candidate will be given three minutes for a candidate statement, wherein they will outline their campaign message. They will then be asked two questions and have two minutes to answer those questions. There are seven candidates running for two positions for this office. We welcome a candidate for re-election, uh, Betty Cavaco. Welcome, Betty. Hi, Julie. How are you? Good, thank you. Please proceed with your candidate statement. You have three minutes. Thank you. Hi, I'm Betty Cavaco. I'm the mother of two amazing young boys, Ethan and Zachary, who are now students at Plymouth North High School. I'm married to my wonderful husband, Chris. He's an awesome father and a wonderful life partner. I have called Plymouth home for as long as I can remember. I grew up on Whitehorse Beach. My parents owned a small business called Costa's Market. When I graduated from high school, I began working as a contractor for Boston Edison down at Pilgrim Station, and then accepted a permanent position with them in Boston. I returned to Plymouth to be with my mother after my father passed away in 1987, and I worked for Boston Edison slash Entergy for about 30 years. My involvement with local politics began when the town decided to close the after-school program with the Manomet Youth Center. Even though I didn't need the after-school program, so many other parents did, and I felt I just had to do something to help. Within a few short months, we formed a nonprofit called the Plymouth Youth Foundation. This organization assists the Manomet Youth Center and organizes youth-oriented activities around Plymouth. Plymouth Youth Foundation is the founder of Winter Winterfest, purchased a skating rink for our community, and both have proven to be a great success. In 2015, I ran unsuccessfully for selectman. After that experience, I decided I needed to learn as much as I could about how exactly the town run so that I could truly make a difference for the community that we all love. I was appointed to the advisory and finance committee where I witnessed and learn town operations. It was the one of the best, most enlightening experiences I have ever had. I believe I am now a sitting selectman. I am asking for your vote in my reelection. I believe I'm different from other candidates because I am constantly directly involved with the community members and I'm approachable. I am just like most of our residents, living paycheck to paycheck and trying to make a good life for our children and our community. Communication is a key aspect of our lives, and that is no different when it comes to town government. I prioritize acting, react, interacting with our residents and every day, and I love it. Sometimes it seems that over the past three years, I swear I have spoken to all 63,000 residents. To me, as an elected official, the most important thing is to make sure residents are heard. Every day I work to achieve this. Thank you. First question, how would you differentiate yourself from your six opponents? You have two minutes. Um, first, I'm a doer. I have a long history of getting things done and not accepting the status quo without question, both before and during my time as a selectman voters to examine every candidate's record. Now it's more important than ever. Plymouth needs doers and not talkers. Secondly, I engage with the residents of Plymouth all day, every single day. Just ask my family. For many, I'm the source of the information about what is going on in their town government, but engagement is more than providing information. It is about talking to our residents and actually really listening to them. It's about talking about their thoughts and concerns and incorporating them into policy. Engagement is either constant priority or it's just isn't the real deal. Thank you. Second question, what are your top three priorities for the town in light of the current situation and how do you plan to fulfill them? You have two minutes. Well, we must make it a priority to help our small businesses get up and running and successfully and as quickly as possible. I'm talking with business owners right now about what they need from town government. We have to engage all of our businesses, the Chamber of Commerce, PGDC, Plymouth 400, and Destination Plymouth to hear and help them rise out of this current situation. I will be their champion in town government. 
I will use my experience in creating Winterfest to help facilitate any event, events, and I will try to eliminate any fees of detail charges or DPW that may arise to help them get back on their feet. The second one, we also must make a priority to support our struggling seniors. They are an integral to the fabric of our community and COVID-19 has impacted them severely. Every Saturday, I reach out to the entire town and ask them to tell me their concerns. I hear from many seniors and sometimes they're just afraid and lonely and just wanna talk and hear a caring voice. But most are concerned about skyrocketing taxes. We must examine our budgetary and tax structures and how they impact all residents to determine new and better policies. Our seniors should be on the top of the mind in this exam examination. Part of this must be refocusing our town government on commercial development over residential development. A tax base with only 10 or 11% commercial contribution is extremely unhealthy for residential taxpayers and dire for, for our seniors. And the third, given our current cir circumstances, we must address government efficiency. This isn't an option. And here are a few of my ideas. We must examine all of the town government and school district processes with an eye towards financial efficiency. I will continue to demand that existing redundancies be eliminated. Our town continues to pay a okay. legal firm over- Thank you, that was two minutes. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks, Betty Cavaco. Today we welcome Alan Costello. Welcome. Good afternoon, Julie. Thank you for having me. Please proceed with your candidate statement. You will have three minutes. Thank you. Hello, my name is Alan Costello, and I am a candidate for Select Board on June 20th. These are challenging times, and I understand that a town election may not be a high priority for residents at this time. However, the ramifications of this pandemic are going to require a new course of action to lead the town back into better times. I have been a resident since 1980. I have raised my family and still reside with my, family Carol, with my wife, Carol, in West Plymouth. I have operated a telecommunications business for the last 30 years here in town. In 2014, I was voted as a town meeting member to represent precinct 10. Later, I was appointed to the committee of precinct chairs. And in 2018, I was nominated and voted in as the chairman of the committee of precinct chairs, a position I hold today. As a town meeting member, I have built a reputation as an advocate for the taxpayer, frequently asking tough questions of town management in an effort to ensure that all expenditures are warranted and are in the best interest of the resident. I assure you, this philosophy will be continued at the next level. The promise of lowering your property taxes is disingenuous. However, I can promise you that I can, that any new tax or rise in taxes will be heavily scrutinized. The age old tax and spend mentality of town management must be stopped immediately, especially during these new uncertain times. Another of my interests has been addressing the huge problem plaguing our town buildings. And although spending monies run counter to my goals, money spent early to maintain our 32 public buildings is far more affordable than when the lack of building maintenance becomes a crisis. Additionally, the anemic commercial industrial tax base in town is a huge burden on the residential taxpayer. Statistics show that we have had an increase in our property taxes of over 14% while losing 10% of commercial industrial tax revenue over the last 10 years. This balance is bad news for residents who must now shoulder any tax increases needed to fill the coffers. In closing, there may never have been a more challenging time in Plymouth's long history as we are now facing. If you are content with the status quo, I may not be your candidate. However, if you desire change, be sure to cast a ballot for Costello on June 20th. Thank you very much. Thank you. First question, 
How would you differentiate yourself from your six opponents? You will have two minutes. Thank you, Julie. I would differentiate myself from my opponents uh, this way. First off, I'd like to give a huge amount of credit to anyone willing to run for town office. There is a big field of candidates, as you have suggested, this election season. Seven candidates for two positions on the board. The two incumbents are, are back for re-election, a past selectman, three town meeting members, and one candidate that has not held an elected office in town. The single biggest difference that I see between myself and the field is that I have a reputation of respectfully asking tough questions of town management in regards to warrant articles, capital articles, projects, in any town business that directly or indirectly affect the taxpayers of Plymouth. I have had several people over the last six years that have told me that they appreciate the fact that I try to get all sides of the issue out front so the very best result can be achieved. The building maintenance debacle is a prime example of this. In the most, in the most recent two town meetings, I feel my input has helped bolster the new maintenance division to give them the personnel and tools to carry out the repairs needed to our town buildings. Unfortunately, that effort has been stymied and forced off track by town management's lack of follow through. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And your second question, what are your top three priorities for the town in the light of the current situation and how do you plan on fulfilling them? You have two minutes. Well, like I said, these are extraordinary times. Uh, however, the three biggest uh, uh, items I see are certainly the revenue shortfall that, that we're expecting, uh, the ability to reinstill confidence in our workforce over the last two or three weeks, talking of furloughs and, and, and layoffs. And then for the general public, uh, the reopening of uh, parks, beaches, recreational areas, try to get some semblance of order back into town as best we can with uh, state guidelines and advice. Uh, how I would hope to re resolve the, the uh, revenue shortfall uh, as it pertains to the town budget is uh, the need to as uh, intelligently and quickly as possible identify exactly where we are today uh, with shortfalls, where we will be next week, and where we'll be next month. Uh, I know the biggest part of this problem is there is a huge amount of unknowns, but we, uh, we have to start making some decisions and uh, develop some scenarios so we have some plans going forward. Uh, the same with uh, instilling confidence in our workforce. Uh, I think it's premature. The timing is not right for layoffs and furloughs. I mean, here we are at the end of two months. We're almost ready to get back into uh, uh, opening up the, the community and the, and the economy. I think the timing is poor for that. I, I think once we have the uh, information on the shortfall, then that can come into play uh, where we are with layoffs and such. Uh, as far as reopening the beaches and the revenue shortfall, we'd, I'd work very uh, closely with town staff and our state delegation to get uh, to the bottom of a lot of this and, and see if we can't get the town back on track. Thank you. Thank you, Alan Costello. We now welcome Kevin Lynch. Hey, howdy. Welcome. Please proceed with your candidate statement, Kevin. You have three minutes. Okay, thank you very much. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, my name is Kevin Lynch. I've lived in Plymouth for 17 years. And uh, I'm a retired high school science teacher uh, of 36 years. And uh, I do want to say that's one of my strengths. I can take something complex and I will be able to go and drill down and do the research and boil it down to make it a lot more simpler to understand. The last thing that people want to do is have government speak and uh, they roll their eyes back up just like I used to see my students and they appreciated me boiling things down. Uh, also, uh, because I'm retired, it allows me quite a bit of time as opposed to some other selectmen. Three of them have full-time jobs. One has a business and I, I commend them for their hard work, but yet this town is really uh, needing people that can focus. 
Now, I've been involved in town government for six years. My first year was in 2014 and to 15 on the advisory and finance committee. And the last five years, I've been a town meeting member for precinct uh, 13. And I have seen the town grow even within those five years, especially the, those six years, especially the uh, town uh, budget. And I believe that the most important job of the selectmen and the select board is to communicate and educate the people of Plymouth. Now, our chairman of the select board said that, unfortunately, that hasn't occurred. So I'd like to be able to uh, do that in a very, very forthright way. I will tell you the unvarnished truth because I respect you, you can handle it, you are adults. And with that being said, focusing on the finances of the town that undergirds all successful business enterprises, corporations, as well as even the family budget. And that's what I'd like to do is have the town of Plymouth business be treated as a business to both support and enhance uh, the community to make it healthy and vibrant. And if the town finance is not healthy, basically the town is not healthy. We have a $257 million budget. It has grown over the past years and I will laser focus on both the strengths and weaknesses of it. And I will communicate them. I will communicate those, those strengths and weaknesses in a very, very forthright way. And again, I will give you the unvarnished truth. Because uh, a, a nice pithy st statement I heard uh, a while back and it was, it's kind of nice. And I think the people of Plymouth want to hear this. Beat me, with the, beat me with the truth. Don't torture me with lies. I don't like to have people said, you know, we know better than you. I will treat you with that respect and I will be very accessible. Thank you. Thank you. First question. How would you differentiate yourself from your six opponents? You have two minutes. Okay, if you can show me, uh, show me that clock, please. Okay. Ready? All right. Um, the three words that I am running undergirding my campaign with is transparency, accountability, and integrity. There's no magic bullet, but what people want is a transparency. I will also be accessible. I will be accessible in person, uh, whether it be downtown, North Plymouth, West Plymouth, I'll be going down to Minimet, Cedarville, uh, with some of the ideas that I will be coming out uh, on social media with, such as a traveling town meeting. Also a public information center that it will be housed in the library with documents there that people can go and access, look at, be able to go have a list of their actual town meeting members they can call up and question them as to why things are happening in a certain way in, uh, in the actual uh, town. I will also advocate for a town meeting update pu uh, publication so that the town meeting members can go on record and they can inform their town, uh, their town citizens as to what is going on. Another, another idea is separating it is I will have a select board salutations. And by that about once a month, once every six weeks, ha six weeks have the selectmen voice their concerns as well as their observations of what's going on in the town. And lastly, for the town government workshops, I would like to on both the first and second Tuesday of every month, be down there at the town hall and have citizens come in and have me be accessible to teach them as to how the town actually operates. And then they can come right over to the select board meetings and they can see how it's being done. Lastly, I would call for a state of the town address on in February and August so people know exactly what the town is doing. Thank you. Thank you. And your second question, what are your three top priorities for the town in light of the current situation and how do you plan to fulfill them? You have two minutes. Well, again, as I said, there is no magic bullet and people are looking for that microwave solution it's not gonna happen, ladies and gentlemen. We didn't get here overnight, it's gonna take a while, so what do I do? I go right back to my roots, transparency. Have that information center in the library so people can access to access that information. Because another nice, nice pithy saying is this, 
a job is better done inspected rather than expected. And, uh, and so people need to go and have clear communication. As Mr. Tavares said on the combined meeting with the advisory and finance committee, the select, the select board and the school committee, communicate and educate. I don't believe that we are doing that. We are doing that well here in this town. So please, I ask for your support there. Going back again, the select board salutations, the, the, uh, the uh, town meeting update. Another thing is to, I like to focus on consolidating some of the town's departments with the school department instead of having redundancy. Uh, the school department does things very well. The town could probably merge with them and emulate them. And lastly, if I could, okay, to be accessible and have select board uh, office hours. And if you could, please feel free to contact me Okay, on my cell phone, 774-218-5238. Would love to hear from you. If you're on board with these ideas, I would be also accessible and open for collaboration with the collective brain power of Plymouth instead of relegating them to the sideline. Please call me at 774-218-5238. Would love to hear from you. And I thank you, PAC TV, for hosting this. I appreciate it. Thanks again. That was Kevin Lynch. Welcome, Everett Malagudi. <clears throat> uh, greetings. So I would like to introduce myself. My name is Everett Malagudi, and I am running for a candidate for a seat on the Plymouth um, Select Board. I decided to run as many people do because we wanted to make a change and a difference in the community. I have served for the past decade um, for this beautiful town as a town meeting rep for Precinct 1 in the North Plymouth area, and also am a current member of many boards, including the Natural Resources and Coastal Beaches Committee, which I chair, the Energy Committee as Vice Chair, uh, the North Plymouth Steering Committee, the Visitor Services Board, and many others. I wanted to bring to the community a fresh perspective that sometimes is lacking within government. And I wanted to make it known that I will do whatever it takes to make a better place for the uh, community and the residents that reside here. <clears throat> um, one that I forgot to add as a committee um, person was the Reverend Idea Task Force, which was one that I was very involved with during um, a few years as we were looking at ways of bringing new revenue into the town and then trying to limit the impact of rising taxes on the taxpayers. As a lifelong Plymouth resident, I have seen many changes in this town and I continue to see changes that affect the everyday lives of its citizens. I love this town with all my heart and have never wanted to leave this town. I want to do whatever I can to keep Plymouth, the Plymouth that I remember and a better place for everyone. I'm here for the people and will support their needs, ideas and dreams in any which way that I can. As I'm hoping that if you elect me, we can make this town an even better place for us to live, work, and play. Thank you, and I hope that, <clears throat> sorry, thank you, and hope to have your vote for this election to make Plymouth even better and a wonderful place to live for continuing generations, including my own. Thank you. First question. How would you differentiate yourself from your six opponents? And you're going to have two minutes. Go ahead. So I would differentiate myself from my opponents. Besides being the youngest um, member running for um, the seat, I would differentiate um, based on my idea to bring a new and creative perspective to the Board of Selectmen. 
I mean, sorry, the select board <clears throat> that I think is somewhat lacking with the other candidates. I have always collaborated with the committees that I've been on with other groups and individuals that have had differing ideas to bring a collaborative, cohesive approach to bring out the same outcome that's right for everyone. And I also believe that having um, multiple voices at the table is what makes the community stronger. And that's what I like to bring to the table is having everyone involved and not just a select few. <clears throat> I believe that having a position that will not be afraid to push the status quo and have the ability to make hard decisions right from the get-go is an important trait for a person on the select board to have and other members of the uh, community that serve on other uh, town positions. I feel that as a younger member of the community that I'm somewhat often looked away a bit at times due to lack of experience, but I can attest that I have a large amount of experience as a decade on the um, town meeting floor, multiple years as committee members and multiple years as attending all different um, sizes and forms of meetings to bring out not just the voice of myself, but also the voices of my constituents and people that look up to me. Thank you. Second question. What are your top three priorities for the town in light of the current situation and how do you plan to fulfill them? You again have two minutes. So in light of the current situation, we have all faced <clears throat> um, a lot of um, road bumps along the way from the current um, situation with the pandemic to the way that the town runs and operates itself. We have, we have always come through a lot stronger in the end due to anything that comes in our way as a town. I, my top priorities for the town are, like most people would be property taxes, the environment, and while it may not be the sexiest um, thing to talk about, would be the continued and upkeep maintenance of our public infrastructure. The taxes, I would do my very best to bring creative ways to find new revenue sources by increasing new um, economic growth in underutilized areas, streamlining efficiencies to reduce costs. <clears throat> the environment would also be for providing more recreational and opportunistic space for people to enjoy the outdoors while preserving the character of the town of Plymouth, as well as <clears throat> making um, Plymouth more resilient in uh, climate um, actions, as well as giving Plymouth a leg up to reduce the burden of overpopulation of housing developments. For <clears throat> the maintenance, uh, if we cannot provide adequate facilities for our public safety to work, whether it be fire, police, DPW, to provide safe conditions for them to work in, we cannot keep um, people keeping the community safe and helping provide community to be a better place to live in. Thank you, Everett, very much. That's been Everett Malagudi. We welcome Frank Mand. Welcome. Could you please proceed with your candidate statement and you will have three minutes. Thank you. Hello, I'm Frank Mann, candidate for select person. Like many of you, I've been surprisingly busy during these last few months. I've had more than my share of Zoom meetings. I've been up to my waist in cold bay water at midnight counting horseshoe crabs. I've been working on the set of interpretive signs for local parks, signs that tell the story of our unique natural communities. I've been trying to keep our Airbnb afloat despite cancellation after cancellation. And in between, I've been trying to campaign for a seat on the select board. That's been its own challenge, campaigning without face-to-face -face meetings, without speeches in people's living rooms. I've determined that the best way to campaign though is to live my life fully, as fully as possible to, as they used to say, represent, represent Plymouth, this community. It came to me just this week that what I needed to do to get my message out 
was exactly what I was trying to do with the park signs. Make people aware that when they are here, they are in a very special place, a place that deserves to be preserved, protected, and in that way promoted. The signs will say, take another look. You're not just in a state park or at a beach. You're in a place that's been formed over thousands of years that contains an amazing amount of rare, often endangered species. That's who we are in a real sense, especially at this moment, an endangered species. Residents of a big, small town with a worldwide reputation, with everything we need to thrive, ocean, ponds, forests, rivers, nonprofits, small businesses, and thousands of hardworking people. But we're often too busy to do more than look around, so we need someone to act on our behalf. Who should that person be? Someone, I think, who has shown they're passionate about and dedicated to this rare thing, this community of Plymouth. Someone who has shown they're not afraid to speak up, to speak out, to say that we're in danger of losing our way, of paving over or digging up or blocking out what makes this place special. I have degrees in literature and business and awards and a resume of experiences, but mostly I have a passion for what makes Plymouth special. From the bars to the beaches, from our shared history to our individual stories, from Court Street to Maine, Sandwich to Jordan, Long Pond to Herring Pond and every street in between. I don't want you to be for Frank Mand. I want you to be for Plymouth. On June 20th, vote for Plymouth and take me along. Want to know more? Visit my website, electfrankman.com. Thank you. Thank you. First question. How would you differentiate yourself from your six opponents? You have two minutes. Do something different. That's my campaign theme. Elect someone different, yes, but do something different. My oldest son was on a hockey team when he was very young, and one of the other parents used to yell out from the stands, do something, Jonathan. What he meant was make a play, steal the puck, check your opponent, take a shot. Or as Celtics broadcaster Johnny Most used to say, stop fiddling and diddling. Even though our master plan's main objective is to stop sprawl, successive boards have just let it happen. I would simply insist we follow that plan. We keep seeing ugly buildings going up, blocking views, destroying the character of our neighborhoods. I would put teeth into the regulations of our village steering committees to stop that. Why do we have so many massive parking lots? What a waste of valuable commercial property. Let's rezone those properties to allow for multi-level projects that include real affordable housing. Why do we still allow solar projects to clear cut forests when those same parking lots could be covered by solar arrays? We're all waiting for the latest announcement from the governor on COVID regulations. We need to act on our own now to give the tourists we need confidence that if they come here, they'll be safe. Are we waiting for Holtec too to tell us what they want to do with the 1500 acre buffer energy had around the plant? We need to do something now. We need to make a play, take a shot. When I was Little League president, I heard coaches tell their players, you can't get a hit if you leave the bat on your shoulder. We need to get up to the plate and swing. That's how I differentiate myself from my opponents. I'm going to do something. That's why I'm asking voters on June 20th to do something different. Elect Frank Mann. Thank you. Thank you. And for your second question, what are your top three priorities for the town in light of the current situation and how do you plan to fulfill them? You have two minutes. Our current situation. Our current situation is that we're mortal. Our time here is limited. It's how we live that matters. The coronavirus just brings that reality into greater focus, but it can't, or at least it shouldn't, change what we value. In fact, for many people, the virus has allowed them to more clearly understand what they value. Family, community, quality of life. The virus will likely have the same effect on our governmental priorities. In light of a loss of revenue, we're facing cuts in services, programs, staff. At least in the short term, we need to have a frank and honest, thorough discussion of what our priorities are. Schools, public safety, the environment, government. Is that a priority? At the very least, I believe we need to do everything possible, use all technologies available to allow for the fullest involvement of our residents in these important debates. I'm very uncomfortable with decisions, however well-intentioned, being made by a few. I don't buy the excuse that we have to sacrifice citizen involvement in order to keep things functioning. 
the easy thing to do would be to make cuts across the board, but that would be the weakest too. If extraordinary measures are needed to fight the virus, extraordinary measures are needed to maintain our civic institutions as well. The quality of education we provide to our children remains a top priority. Public safety too is critical. And to that, I would add the need to enhance our public health department. Protecting our abundant natural resources is also a top priority of mine. And I believe that can be accomplished at little or no cost. And perhaps the top priority is not to panic, not to make cuts to certain services or to important regulations that when the virus has been defeated, will leave this beautiful town scarred and vulnerable. My name is Frank Mann, candidate for select person. Thank you. Thank you, Frank Mann. We now welcome Dick Quinto. Welcome, Dick. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Please proceed with your candidate statement. You will have three minutes. Thank you again. I was born here in Plymouth. I have four children and six and a half grandchildren. I run my own family business, small business, uh, known as Quintal Brothers Wholesale Fruit and Produce, and I run a farmer's market. Also newly acquired and opened Squinney's Pizza. I think I have what it takes to know how to run budgets, and I also have a many years on the experience on the select board, also being cheered through the toughest economic times uh, this country's pretty much faced, and we seem to come through okay. I feel that the town is, uh, been spending on a spending spree, basically. Spending pretty much all they've taken in and then promising some they don't have. We need to watch what we're doing, stop the foolish spending, and, and that doesn't mean by cutting jobs and hurting our schools. Um, I will look to other avenues. That will only be a last resort if elected to me. Thank you. Your first question. How would you differentiate yourself from the other candidates? You have two minutes. Uh, my experience, not only did I sit on the select board, as they call it now, I, I sat on the PGDC, the Visitors Services Board. Um, I'm a member here in the park, or I was, and uh, I know what it takes to, to get things done. Um, I, I feel that the present board doesn't question the decisions of the town manager enough at least not in public at the meetings. I mean, a lot of big decisions are gonna to have to be made and you have to do your homework and you have to see what's a future for Plymouth. They need to have a goal setting or a mission setting sessions, maybe more than one with various committees if need be and see where do we want Plymouth to be 10 years from now? What do we want it to look like? You know, I'm very concerned at the amount of department heads that are leaving this community right now, this year, um, there's, there's at least five leaving, and now Larry Pies had just put in last week, he's leaving. I'm very concerned with this. This is going to be a very important time for our community, uh, along with the other issues such as COVID-19. We're going to make sure that all our town employees are protected, have the right protection and equipment they need, as well as having a safe plan for our citizens. Thank you. Second question, what are your top three priorities for the town in light of the current situation and how do you plan to fulfill them? You again will have two minutes. Uh, the first and I think the, one of the most largest ones is the former site known as Entergy, which is now Holtec. Um, there's a number of acres there, I believe it's about 12 to 1500 uh, without looking it up, that are gonna have to be divided and decided upon by this community what's best for the town of Plymouth, uh, an agreement with the stakeholders and the citizens. Um, it cannot all be developed. There's gonna be just as much conservation there, but we have to look at it, we have to study it and put out a plan just as we did for the Pine Hills. Together through town meeting, I think we can get to that accomplishment. We need to promote our community in a positive way. Too many developments in this community have gone banned. Just to mention a few, uh, Home Depot Drive is now turning into housing, um, whether it be affordable or any kind of housing. Um, we definitely need commercial property. And how that went bad, we'll save that for another day. But the leaders in this community should have stood up, talked to the stakeholders, and got it done. That was the one we'll never get back, you know? And like I said before, uh, the Water Street area is being developed partial by partial. And I'll give you this, 
it's there right. But what do we want that street to look like? We're in the tourist industry. That's about the only thing Plymouth has left right now. Uh, are we just going to let it go? Is it historic? Is it not historic? It's supposed to be telling a story. And part of that story is the pilgrims, not the condominiums. That being said, things change. And I'll have to accept that as like the rest of the community. But we need a, a, a plan to go by to get the end result. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I don't think it's enough being done for small businesses across town to work together with this board, the Economic Development Foundation, Mr. Cole, and the Chamber. We need to come together. We need to meet quarterly and get things done to help to everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was Dick Quintel. Please remember to vote in the town election scheduled to be held on Saturday, June 20th. I'm Julie Thompson for PAC-TV. Stay informed. Keep it local. Good day.